Oof. 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 Oh, I finally made it. After all this time of mountain climbing and training, I'm finally able to get the treasure I've been wanting to get my hands on. I've been training for this day my whole life. I simply must believe I can break these bricks. I know I can do it. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, ooh. He. Ooh. I must train harder if I'm going to succeed. I'll be back. Ooh. Hello my friends and welcome to the advanced ground pound video where you're going to learn how to do a front flip to your ground pound, kind of like Mario and a lot of other games use, so you can make an even better game and you can do awesome stuff as well, activate switches and make it look a lot more professional. Now this fluff ball is able to access the treasure the traveler couldn't. Stick around to the end of the video to see what's in the chest. One of the coolest things about this is you can actually use it with any of the fancy objects. You can also change the effect that happens when the ground pound occurs. Let's get started. To begin, we have the same setup that I had in my first ground pound video. Make sure you guys go check that one out before you watch this one. You can click on the card that's on the screen now to take you there. We're going to change from the traveler this time and we want to be the fluff ball. All you have to do is go in the settings and change it there. And we also want to change the size up to let's say about 1.2. If our fluff ball is 1.2, then we want our person to be about 1.3, just a little bit bigger. All you do is connect these together center center, if you didn't know that. And we need to change the touch sensor next as well, down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.5. For today, we also need to change this button here the down press to on press instead of while pressed. Next, we're going to disconnect the down button from the teleporter. Before we had that activating the teleporter, but now we're going to want to have a timer instead. We're going to move it over here and set the timer to output after 0.4 seconds. The continue output for zero is fine. We're going to need some extra time later. Then we're going to hook the and into this one and the timer output into the teleport. This will tell us when to teleport now, which if you remember is how we actually ground pound. Next, we're going to need to call up a wormhole. Of course, these are optional, but it keeps your code super clean. So as long as you have some extra nodons, definitely want to have a wormhole to be able to go from this and because you see how many times we use it. So our basic goal is whenever we jump and hold down, we want the fluff ball to do a front flip and then go down. So in order to accomplish this, I thought we could just go grab a special object, rotating object and sphere, then attach it to the person and rotate the whole thing. However, whenever you attach something to the person, it doesn't actually help them to rotate. That's actually not possible. So I was a little bit confused, but we are going to use this one just in a little bit different way than I originally thought. So now that we have this whole setup, we're going to make our setup for making the rotation actually occur. And in order to do this, we need to have an entirely separate fluff ball. Let's go ahead and copy this fluff ball and move him up here. The fluff ball settings should be like this for both of them, visible and movable, but not solid. You can make this new one a little bit bigger if you want to do a special effect, we might do that later. The settings for the rotating object are going to be turning all of these things off. Of course, you can't touch movable. Everything else should be fine, except the connection point we're going to make center center as well. We're going to go ahead and connect this fluff ball, this new one, to the rotating sphere as well and size this guy up so they're the same size. So our new goal is going to be rotating this new fluff ball here and that'll act in place of the other one. So next, we're going to have to decide how much to rotate it. Let's go ahead and call up a program layout wormhole exit a and then we can go ahead and copy our down button here these two guys are going to work together next we're going to call up an and and put it in the middle of these two so that we need to be in the middle of a ground pound and holding the down button for the rotation to take place 
Then we're going to want to decide how much to rotate. So we're going to grab a map node on here and connect our end into this. Let's set the map node on. That's fine. Zero to one. We want this one down here, negative four to zero. Go ahead and hook your map node on up to the Z axis. That's the front and back flip axis. Next, we're going to need to call up a teleporter. This is how we're actually going to make the switch occur. So we're going to have the teleport entrance be over here. Let's go ahead and set this one to teleport IDC. You can have it whatever shape you want. Keep it in the center. And we're going to want to teleport our fluff ball. Go ahead and hook this teleporter up to the fluff ball. The trigger is going to be from this original and that we've been using quite a bit. Of course, you could also use the wormhole exit if it's farther away. For the teleport exit, we're going to go over to our original fluff ball, which we have attached to our person node on, and call up the teleport exit over here. We're going to hook it up to that fluff ball, and then we're going into the settings. Let's turn it invisible, keep center center, and we want to reset the physics. By doing this, the new fluff ball is going to teleport in the same place that the original fluff ball is located, which will give us that effect of the rotation. If you've been following along, you should have something like this. You have both characters here. Essentially, we are teleporting in a new fluff ball to do the rotation, so we're going to have to hide the original fluff ball. And that's what we're going to show you guys how to do next. Back in the code, go ahead and select the wormhole exit, the down button, and the and button. You can hold ZL on your controller while you select these, and then press copy, and drag them over to where you have a little bit of space for this next part. Next, let's go ahead and call up a timer. Set the output for 0 0.03 and the continuation for 0 0.40. You might notice this was the same exact one as before. In order to turn our original fluff ball invisible, there's a neat little trick we can use by going into special objects and grabbing a texture. Connect this one up to the fluff ball, and then you're going to connect the output of the timer into the texture. This will say for 0 0.40 seconds, we're going to turn this fluff ball invisible. Of course, we also need to turn the other one visible, so let's go ahead and call up a not node on and attach it to the timer as well. Then just copy the blank texture, and we're going to attach that to the not node on and hook that one up to the teleporting fluff ball. If you followed everything well so far, this is what you should have just like that. And it looks pretty good. We are almost done. However, there is something we can add to make this so much better. Depending on what game you're making, you can add different effects to the ground pound to give it a much different feel. If you want the traditional Mario feel, you can add some smoke. Or if you want an explosive feel, you can add an explosion. Or if you're in a dark cave, you can actually add light. Finding the placement for your effects is pretty easy. Just head back to the last end statement you made. It should be by the timer with the texture node ons, and you're going to need another timer. You can just copy the one you used earlier and put it underneath. Then we're going to change the timings for this one. I think for me, I found that 0.6 was good for the top one and about 0.55 for the bottom one. You can set it to whatever you want for your own personal use, of course. Then we're going into special objects and calling up Whichever one of these you guys like. Smoke is kind of the traditional one, so that's the one I'm going to use. Hook it into the timer, and then the original fluff ball. We're also going to make it quite a bit bigger. Head into the settings, and we're going to change it to world location. Turn the frame off. And we want to make this own center target Y minus underneath the characters where we want to go. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Here we have the fluff ball and ground pound to smoke. I'd say it looks pretty good. Of course, you're not limited to that. You can also use explosion, damage, and even light if you make it considerably bigger. If you ever decide you want to change your character, there's going to be a few things you need to change. So you want to go into the first fancy object and change it to, let's say, alien. It's automatically going to reset the size, so change it back to the size you had before. Make sure your person is 0.1 bigger on the y-axis, so 1.3. That'll make sure that it doesn't go into the ground. Then you also need to change the fancy object that you're teleporting in. We'll change this one over to alien as well and change it to the same size. Or if you make it bigger, it makes a really nice effect as well when you're ground pounding. So you can consider that. Also make sure to change this teleporter to teleport just this one, or you can include these if you're switching a lot so that it teleports your alien. If you don't change all three of those things, then something's gonna get off. 
All right, my friends, it's time to see if we can find the treasure for ourselves. Let's head down here. This enemy is no match for our front or back flip ground pound, depending on which way we're facing. And it's also very useful for switches like this one. Let's go. All right, we'll wait for this one to open up. And what is the treasure we've been seeking? A giant apple. Fluffballs love apples, so this is going to make him really happy. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys use this well. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. And until next time, take care. And God bless.